if it's live yet. Hello. Hey, Ayakwe. Looks like we're live. Welcome to Facebook. Three o'clock, North Coast Redwoods District. Neck now, Skip Lowry. I'm a interpreter for Patrick's Point State Park here at Sumac Village. Uh, over my shoulder, I'm sitting leaning on a house. You can see it's awesome. Indigenous engineering and construction. Today we're going to do a little bit of Yurok language together. I'm excited to kind of be able to focus um, just a little bit on some of the words that I know. I don't have example for everything, but uh, like the house, for example, we'll start right off. Uh, I see a couple people signing in. Thank you. Good picture and sound. I really appreciate that feedback because I can't hear myself or see myself other than right here. Thank you so much. Uh, sound out where you're at, if you could. Um, I love seeing your guys' names and your comments, but it's really neat to um, see how far reaching these programs are, are going. Uh, we are trying our best at State Parks here to um, service the community and the public in the best possible way. We have a mission statement to protect um, our most diverse cultural um, and biological and ecological diversities here at the park. So um, telling us where you're at, where you're coming from really is cool. Uh, appreciate that. So Oswalt, the Yurok House, Oswalt. We're going to talk a little bit today about language and how um, I'm holding it, so if it's shaky, today I'm moving around. There's no tripod, so forgive me if it's really shaky. Uh, language. Language is so important in your culture because we didn't write it down. So you had to experience what you learned about. Um, you had to talk about it. You had to listen very well and very hard. So I was, it's kind of like you had to close your mouth. You can close your eyes, but you had to open your ears and open your heart. Um, when you're out in the world, language connects you to place in your culture. So some people didn't, we don't, everybody didn't know the entire your language because there's are things that in our culture you must experience to understand and to talk about and you can't talk about stuff you haven't experienced really um so it's really kind of cool when you think about it how when you say off well all the yurok house you're connecting to something that's really deep so we're at sumeg village the sumeg village is part of what's known right now in current times as the yurok tribe it is the largest tribe in california it has the largest land base currently in california um, its boundaries, Aboriginal territories are just south of the town now known as Trinidad. Uh, a little bit south of there, there's a little river called Little River. <laughs> and, uh, that's our southern border all the way up to about four miles shy of Crescent City. Then all the way up the Klamath River to, uh, just past the confluence of the Trinity River. So if you go up the Trinity River, you go into Hoopa land. And if you go up around the bend past the trinity further you're going to karuk land so when contact happened they named us right the the european immigrants came here and they said who are these guys who are you and the word yurok is actually a karuk word for downriver people so they were the first to get hit by miners after the the and uh, the 49, you know, 1849, gold was found in California. And so a new language and world, and with that language comes a worldview, comes relationships with a place. And so they didn't have a relationship with this place. They renamed everything. And oftentimes they violently removed and replaced the status of an area like Sumeg with its own name, Patrick's Point. Whoa. So Sumag is a village, from what I understand, the name means it's always been here, always going to be here, always is. Um, kind of like our culture. It's just eternal. So we called ourselves Oth, Oth, 
you got to kind of have some spit in your mouth and blow out the sides of your off. Oh, there's a lot of that in our language. Uh, scaly craw, the mole. Scaly craw, the mole. Uh, Skes, the ground. Scalona. Scalona. The world we exist in. Scalona, physical, that we walk around on. So, os is what we call ourselves. We are the people. Os. Yurok is a Karuk word. Isn't that funny? So when I point at the house here and I say, Osh, Wa'alt, I'm saying the people's house. Osh, the people, Wa'alt, their house. You could say like, Was, Wa'alt, Was, Wa'alt. That means the spider's house, spider's web. Was, Wa'alt, Wa'alt, its house. Like that one up there. So that's just a little bit of a burst of like, okay, they changed our language. They changed the names of places. They even call us what we don't call ourselves. They call us what our neighbors called us. We're downriver from the Karuk tribe. They said, who are those guys that we're going to meet? If we go down there, who are we going to find? Karuk or Yurok. Karuk is actually upriver. Yurok. Yurok people. You're going to meet them downriver people. Uh, in our own language, we can say uh, Pulikla, Pulikla, downriver. And Pechikla, upriver. Pulikla, downriver. Pechikla, upriver. The river, the Klamath River, um, that Yurok tribe is uh, associated with. Um, Heishkikwaroi. Heishkikwaroi. From the mountains it travels down. Heishkikwaroi. The water that comes from the mountains. Heishkikwaroi. Boy, it's hot and muggy here today. I'm sweating. Um, it's hot in California. Uh, that's for sure. But we have such an awesome environment. It is overcast. Um, the redwood trees create their own environment, so it's nice and cool. Um, it creates a, a fog that we often live in here on the north coast. So I'm not getting beaten down with sun, but it sure is muggy. The sun's up there. You go five miles inland and you're in a heat wave in California right now. So I'm gonna walk a little bit over here. I actually did figure out, unfor unfortunately, <laughs> oh wait, no, it's not working, how to switch my screens. I did figure it out, but it's not doing it, so I gotta do this again. Whatever, I don't like technology. So here we have a key in our park here. Uh, there it is, key. So redwood tree, key. That right there is a redwood tree. Uh, one in the few left, or it actually is a third growth. It it uh, was planted when this uh, recreation village was recreated <laughs> in 1990. So it's not that old. That that key right there. We have some shrubs that fruit right here. I don't know if you can see, but if you come to Patrick's Point State Park, you will find these guys. They are huckleberry in English, evergreen huckleberry. And in Yurok, we call them chiguri. Chiguri. And they are super delicious and sweet. And sometimes you get really, like, they're not very, let's see here. Oh my God, I can't do this. There it is. They're not very big. They can get a little bigger than that, uh, about the size of your pinky top. Um, but man, they're so super good. There's two types. So this one here is the, the evergreen, and it's the blue huckleberry. There's also a red huckleberry um, that is found in the park here. And that's... I need to swallow. Sloisketa. Sloisketa is the red huckleberry. Sloisketa. Slois Keta and Chiguri. All right. So I'm look at some of these comments from Oakland. I see someone from Oklahoma, Eureka, LA, Willows. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm just going to kind of give you a see if I can see these trees here uh, with the white trunks and the big kind of 
spade shaped leaves. I'll come right over here, 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 here. So this type of leaf, very similar to another plant. This one's the red alder. Uh, there's a cousin to it called cascara and cascara. You don't want to eat its bark. It's a, it's a laxative. It's a medicinal thing. It looks just like this. This is alder. Now what's cool about this tree, the red alder is it's called red because when you cut it open, it's got a really pinkish red meat and a dye inside of it. And the Yurok people would make dyes. And the women would dye their basket material. Oh, my thing just fell. So the, the alder tree, its bark has color inside of it. When you cut it open, it looks red. And you would dye, make a pulp, and dye your basket material. Um, so if you go into a private collection hopefully or someone in your family that has baskets uh, or if you happen in a museum and they have some Yurok baskets you'll see a red design in a lot of the ceremonial baskets that red design is traditionally made out of the uh, bark pulp material out of this tree so in Yurok you say Wurgerch Wurgerch that's the red alder and the color orange because it's technically a orangish salmon color it's not really pekoya like blood blood color is red red and that is pekoya pekoya this is more of an orangish hue and so it's wer the color orange in your rock wer so in english they call this the red alder because it has like a reddish hue to it but in Yurok, it's the color of orange. Wurgerch is this tree. Wurgerch san is anything like the color of that tree. So when you think of the language, we say, oh, I'll get down on the ground here. Erwer, grass. Erwer, grass. So anything that's the color of grass is called Erwer san. It's like grass. Erwerson, so the cap, the trees, uh, leaves behind me, what color are they? Erwerson, they're the color of grass. Erwerson, color of grass. Wurgerchson, the color of the alder. Wurgerchson, that orangish. There's not any, oh yeah, there is. Oh, let me come over here. Oh, 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 oh. So, this right here. Chishup is flower. Chishup. Now, the color of this flower is Luthson. Luthson. It's loop, it's uh, iris like. So the iris is Luth. This is not an iris. Um, I am not a plant expert, so forgive me of that. But I do know that this is Luzon, the color of the iris. Uh, kind of color of your lips sometimes when they get really cold, they get kind of purpley. Um, so it's purplish, Luzon. And then Chishup is flower. And I said Chekini, which is small. Small Chekini, Chishup, Luzon, Luzon. Right next to it, we got some clover flowers. Oh, this way. Oh man, okay, there we go. So this is a little clover flower. Moonshay, like moonshay would be the color of moonshay. That means white, moonshay. Chikini chishup. I don't see any dandelions, yes I do. Okay, we can go to dandelions next in English. Dandelions are yellow. Right, so we have some beautiful dandelions here. Where'd it go? There it is. And this beautiful color is tanep. Tanep. Yellow. Tanep. All right. Now we have a dried leaf. Brown. 
Sock toy. Sock toy. Brown. Cap, his leaf or brush. Uh, sock toy with cap. Sock toy. Whoa, where are we at? There we are. There's the village. Ayakui. Oh, so all. Ayakui. So the Ayakui is like a. Hello, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's coming from your heart. Our language is from our heart. Your language is uh, has has words that show deep um, emotional meaning um, and resonance. We have in our songs. There are songs with language, and there are words that you only sing during those ceremonies and those songs because they're so powerful. Words are powerful. The sounds we can make as people to communicate is amazing. And so the Iraq worldview and language harbors in this geography the most sophisticated natural resource relationship process and balance to date. So fires are out of control. We're uh, relearning how to have sustainable relationships with the world. And the Yurok culture has a lot to teach us. And a lot of that teaching can come from our language. So, uh, the Hazel. I'm carrying this portable Wi-Fi device in my backpack. Doo -doo -doo. And it's not light. Um, the Hazel that we tie our houses with. Haw leaf. Haw leaf when it's growing. Haw leaf. So when it's made into rope, uh, check chi, check chi, check. Okay, scratch that one. I don't know that one off the top of my head. I should know. Check chi, what is rope? Man. So I'm still learning. As you can see, our culture again was uh, tragically targeted for elimination and on the books. We are supposed to not be here. We are supposed to have been a vanishing people. Right now I'm sharing a lot about our language and I share about my culture and I want to acknowledge that I'm not a person on display. There's this thing that I'm going to start talking about in the future. We'll get deep again. Uh, displayed peoples and native peoples and what California State Parks interpretation here represents is not putting us on display. It is allowing us to share our story finally, to engage in the civic arena, in leadership, uh, capacity um, properly compensated and honored um, as the community members we have always been in this place which is uh, healthy and balanced and taking care of each other so with me saying that I'm gonna sound out it is 319 I don't know if I have any questions I can answer really quick there is a Yurok story about Sagap the alder bark and salmon yes there is uh it's a really neat story maybe next time i can share that so no pressing questions you guys take care out there again uh if you visit our parks appreciate the social distancing and and um taking care of the person next to you masking up and keeping social distance all our maintenance workers out there again thank you so much and we will see you uh, every day at 3 o'clock, Facebook Live, North Coast Redwoods District. We have other interpreters that are do fascinating and wonderful things. Oh, yeah, I had this in my pocket. This is a Elkhorn tool. I was going to talk about that. I will next time. But this Elkhorn is used as a chisel to cut the ends. So, huh, I guess, teaser for next time. Talk about the Elkhorn. Okay, we'll see you again. Out.